Hi, so this um, video is aimed at looking at um, math spec fragmentation, okay, and just for um, the current A-level um, exam um, and Excel papers, okay, so it's actually topic um, topic seven. So back in topic one with math spec, we just looked at, looked at it for, um, for elements, okay, for monatomic or diatomic elements to be able to calculate their relative atomic masses, okay. So when we come to topic seven, then, we're now looking at what happens if a molecule goes through, okay? Rather than just individual elements, what if we've got a molecule, okay? And in particular, we're looking at organic molecules, of course, okay? So if we take an organic molecule um, as an example, um, so methanol, okay? We'll start with something really nice and easy. So methanol then, okay, looks something like this. So it's our first of the alcohols, isn't it? All right, there we go. And I'm going to start kind of building an image of what the mass spec would look like, all right? So if I pass methanol into my um, mass spec, all right, it's going to get bombarded with electrons. And if we imagine that my molecules stay together, all right, but it does become ionised, so one electron gets um, knocked off, okay? So we end up with our um, CH3. So there's my um, kind of um, structural formula of my methanol. And it ends up as an ion, okay? So to get there, I'll just show you, because we often show the um, steps, sorry, um, kind of as a progression with our um, of equations. So I start with my, my, my whole molecule, and it becomes ionised, okay, because it loses an electron, because an electron, um, it's been, bomb been bombarded, sorry, with high power electrons, so electron has been um, removed from my molecule, okay? So the first peak I've drawn on then, I've drawn it on as 32. And hopefully you've been able to realise that if I add together all the atoms in my methanol, it happens to equal 32, all right? So we call this then the molecular ion. So let's um, annotate that on for you. So the molecular ion, all right? It also can be known as the parent ion, okay? Which makes sense, all right? It's kind of what was the, what's my whole molecule, okay? If it passed passes through unscathed, all right? So this is my molecular ion. So that is just the mass of my molecule. So you're literally adding together all the atoms within that molecule, okay? And you're just remembering that. So if it was asking, okay, what has caused the peak at 32? We have to remember that it needs to um, be positive, doesn't it, okay? Because only um, remember only positive ions are detected in our mass spec, all right? So there's our peak at 32. However then, if we're passing our um some um our methanol sorry through to our um, mass spec the likelihood is it's probably going to get broken apart okay because of these electrons okay um it can easily break apart our molecule and this is what is called fragmentation okay it's literally fragmenting my molecule okay think of it like that so this here then my molecular ion it's going to be pretty unstable all right so it probably is going to get further like knocked down by my electrons okay so we could have them, we're thinking now, what else could um, come off my molecule, okay? How could it break apart? So the other um, main peaks in my methanol, okay, actually occur at 15, okay? Again, apologies for the scale, I'm gonna put 15 around here. Okay, we'd have a peak, all right? And we actually get a peak um, at 31 as well. Okay, so I'll do another little peak there at, um, let me just hodge that over, at um, 31. Okay, just before I carry on then showing you what's caused these peaks here, I've purposely drawn a little wee peak here, all right? Just one unit after my molecular ion, so at 33 in this instance. So it is worth being aware of how that peak has occurred. And actually, if you think back to topic one um, with isotopes, all right? With our organic molecules, okay, they contain carbon, all right? And carbon, of course, has an isotope. The main isotope happens, happens to be carbon-13, okay? There's only 1% of it um, in naturally occurring carbon, but it is enough to sometimes be detected on our mass spec. So if you have this um, peak, okay, um, which is just one plus from our um, molecular ion peak, this is being caused by the 1% abundance of carbon-13 within our organic sample, okay? So going back to then where we get a peak at 15 and 31 occurring, all right? So I've got my molecule here. So I've ionised it, it happens to be positive. Okay, not very stable, what could break off? 
So we're thinking, what could cause a peak at 31? We only need to remove something that weighs one, don't we? If we have a look at our molecule, we've got loads of things that weigh one, all right? So the likelihood is that the H here could be removed, all right? So we draw that, we'd say, right, it started off as our molecular ion, okay? And I'm gonna remove this, okay? It's gonna get bombarded and it's gonna end up as CH3O, okay? Because it has had a hydrogen removed, okay? We've ended up with the positive um, ion again, okay? And this is what's gonna be detected. And if we, um, again, add up the atoms here, we find that it weighs 31. And that is where our peak at 31 happens, okay? The peak at 15 then, if we go back to our um, full sample here, um, we could find that, ah, what weighs 15? Well, there's carbon and three hydrogens weighs 15. This is a real common peak actually that you'll, again, you don't need to um, memorize all the fragments that could possibly happen with organic molecules, as long as you can draw them out and then basically count um, and know, oh, my carbon weighs 12, these weigh one, and just work out, ah, if this broke away, what would that weigh? Ah, it would weigh 15, yeah? Um, so we could have, again, I'll do it all coming from our molecular ion. I'm going to be ended up with a CH3, that's going to be detected, okay, at 15, okay, and we'll end up with our OH as well, okay. So here, because of carbon and three hydrogens weigh 15, that is how we get our peak at 15, all right. So the last thing to mention kind of in this one is with how I've kind of drawn my um, equations here. And we can see that the first one, that was fine, wasn't it? We just um, lost an electron from my, um, my whole molecule. So there's our electron there. With these ones then, this was, gonna, this was being detected this time. This was my peak at 31. To get there from this then, it had to have um, lost its hydrogen, hadn't it, okay? So when you've got your, um, your fragmentation happening, when you've got the uh, molecule that's fragmenting, because it's going to come apart, you're going to end up with a positive ion and then you get a radical, okay? It's the positive ion that's going to be detected. The radical is just going to kind of um, travel through and um, not be detected, okay? And just kind of mopped up at the end, all right? Think of it like that, all right? So with these ones, because I've called these my positive ions, these are the ones that are going to be detected on my um, mass spec, okay? So this is just another um, organic molecule that um, I thought we could have a look at. So this is um, butanone, okay? So um, one of the ketones, there's our functional group there. Um, so I've drawn-ish um, what the mass spectra um, might look like, okay? Please don't worry about the kind of the peak heights too much, all right? All you need to be able to do is to be able to decipher what um, fragment has caused what peak, all right? Um, the, the relative intensities and the way that it fragments is just um, a book, kind of the A-level um, syllabus, so don't worry about that, okay? So with butanone then, um, we've got a peak at 72. So remember the furthest peak to the right then, ignoring the N plus one rule with the carbon 13, okay? Um, is our molecular iron, yeah? That's what the whole thing is gonna weigh. So if you add it, um, carbon, 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 oxygen, and the rest um, are hydrogen. Sorry, I've been lazy and not written in my hydrogens. And it should weigh 72, okay? So this is caused by our molecular ion. So a question could be, I'll oh, just identify what fragments have caused um, the main peaks on my spectra, okay? So my master charge of 72, okay, would be my molecular ion. So I would just um, write out the um, kind of the formula of my butanone, okay? You could write it out structural formula, you could write it out molecular formula, it really doesn't matter with your um, molecular ion, okay? So I'm just going to write it out as C4H3, um, H8, o, okay? But remember, positive, because it was detected by our own mass spec, okay? So that's our one at 72. The reason I've drawn it out for you, okay, is to then help with these bits here. So we're thinking that, okay, what could fragment and give us these masses? As we just saw with methanol then, that had a peak at 15, didn't it? And hopefully you remembered what it was from. It was from a CH3. And actually, we could have it breaking here, okay? We could have it breaking here. Either way, we've got CH3s, haven't we, okay? So 12, 13, 14, 15, that's what's gonna be causing my peak at 15. So master charge 15 would be caused by 
a methyl group, a CH3, okay, fragment, all right? We're then thinking then, what's caused um, my peak at 29? So if we start this side, 12, 24, 25, 26, 27, add the oxygen. Nah, you've overshot it, haven't you? Okay, that isn't going to weigh 29. Let's go this way, 12, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. Ah, brilliant, okay. If it fragmented down here, okay, this ethyl group that would break off would weigh 29. So there's our peak at 29. So 29 would be my CTH5 ethyl group. Okay, sorry, that plus looks like a 7 there, doesn't it? There we go. Again, you will find that you come across the methyl and the ethyl probably quite a lot when you're looking at different um, organic molecules and how they can fragment. But again, don't try and memorise them as long as you can just work out that an ethyl weighs 29 and, oh yeah, I can break an ethyl off in this example, yeah? So then our last peak we need to identify is at 43, okay? And then if we, if we carried on from this side, 12, um, 24, 36, and we're going to find that we're going to get above 43 if it's this whole bit that fragments. But if we come from this side, 12, 24, 25, 26, 27, and 16, ah, brilliant, there's our 43. So it would be if it fragmented here. For 29, it was this bit that was detected, wasn't it? This was our positive ion. But again, it could fragment here, and this time we're going to detect this side of our molecule, okay? So it would be a um, C2H3O group, okay? Or again, you could draw that out as a ch 3 CO, so in a more structural way. I actually prefer drawing it out in the structural way because I'm more vis um, kind of visual from my displayed formula than drawing it out in my structural formula to kind of show um, what has caused that fragment, if that makes sense, okay? Okay, so now I've got um, two different spectra here that I've drawn up. Okay, again, please ignore the scale along the bottom. Um, so here we've got a problem. We've got because we look furthest to the right, our molecular iron peak for both of these molecules then is 58, okay? So this would probably be quite a common question. You're told that, right, we've got an organic molecule with this molecular formula, um, but which one, um, assign which one to which spectra, okay? So C3H6O, C3H6O, all right? Having a look at that formula then, you first want to decide out what molecules could they kind of be between, all right? So we've got three carbons, it's going to be kind of a probe, all right? Um, six hydrogens and an oxygen. So we haven't got enough oxygen for it to be a carboxylic acid, so we can rule that one out. Um, if we drew it out, it couldn't be an alcohol, okay, because we haven't got enough um, hydrogen. So if we have a look, it is actually going to be um, a ketone or an aldehyde, so it will either be propanone or propanal. So let's draw them both out then, and we're going to decide which one is for which um, spectra, okay? Which, so which molecule, propanol, belongs to which spectra, and propanone, which one is that, okay? So I'll start with propanol here. One, two, three. Do, do, do. Um, so it's our aldehyde, so it looks like that, okay? And then I've got my propanone, one, two, three, but it's our ketone this time, and it looks like that. Okay, so let's just check one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. The right number of hydrogens, right number of carbons, right number of oxygen. Okay, so now we're thinking what ways can these both fragment? So we know that the molecular ion peak for both of them is going to be 58 because if we add three C's and six H's and an O together, that equals 58. Okay, so the parent ion is caused by the whole molecule. All right, this molecular ion. Both of them then have a peak at 15. And we can see, can't we, we're thinking back to the other the molecules we've looked at already, and both of them could fragment this methyl group, all right? So I'm actually gonna try and use these um, to show you kind of, right, that could break there, that could break there. Both of those would give us the peak at 15, okay, from our methyl um, popping up. And with propanone, it could actually pop off the other side as well, couldn't it, okay? So that's our 15 peaks. So we can't um, make the decision yet, can we, all right? Both of them apparently have a peak at 43 as well. So let's find these peaks at 43. So for our propanol then, we've got, um, we could go from, um, so 12, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. And that's not enough, that isn't equal in 43. Um, 12, 24, 25, 26, 27, um, 37. Ah, brilliant. This bit here, if I circle this bit in green, do, 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 do,
my prig now. That gives me my 43 peak, okay? Let's have a look at the propanona. Let's check we can get a 43 peak because it's saying that it, you can because it's in both spectra, okay? Um, so if we have here 12, 24, ah, yep, yeah, brilliant. We've got a CH3CO group. And again, I'll do that one in green. So there we go, that would equal 43 as well, okay? And now we're working out, then this is the deciding peak, isn't it? Which we can have um, a fragment that weighs 29. If we have a look at propanone then, so if we dealt with uh, the methyl could um, break off, if we break it here, that weighs 43. If we break it here, ah, that would weigh 43. Nothing is coming out as 29, is it? But if we look at our um, propanone, 12, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, ah, my ethyl could pop off, couldn't it, okay? So I'll do that. Hopefully this blue works, brilliant. There we go, Dim. Hopefully this is making it a bit more visual. So our C2, H5 would give us our peak at 29, okay? So actually, I've drawn the appropriate molecule under the appropriate end spectra just to kind of make it a bit more better um, for you to visualise it now we've come to our conclusion, all right? So A would be our spectra for propanone and B would be our sp um, spectra for propanone. Couldn't work it out from our molecular ion, couldn't work it out from our peaks at 15 and 43. This was our ultimate deciding peak. To work that out, I had to draw out my structures, okay, and really think where could it actually break down, all right? And just to summarise then on here, what caused which peak? So that was our methyl fragment, okay. This was our ethyl fragment, C2H5, all right. Our 43, I'll do it as a um, CH2COH, and then that was our molecular ion. Here, our 43 was our um, CH3CO, and then our 58, oops, sorry, Got to be positive to be detected, and this would just be our parent ion, okay? So hopefully that's made it a little bit clearer on what to do with the fragmentation with the mass spec. Um, honestly, all I would do was, um, with this one, for example, think about well, what molecules could it be? They're not going to try and catch you out. What have you learned about already, okay? You've learned about alcohols, ketones, aldehydes, carboxylic acids, yeah? Um, you're then thinking, right, if I've got my displayed formula, where can it break up? Okay, and then you'll start getting used to it. Please don't stress about it too much. Learning that our methyl does weigh 15, so that's a common fragment that could happen. Our methyl is 29, okay? Um, and really, you're just kind of piecing it together. They often then will put the mass spec alongside with the infrared spectra too, to give you kind of further evidence and um, kind of clarification of which um, molecule you've got, okay? And remember, for the infrared, you'll have the, um, the sheet in your data book in the exam anyway, so you can refer to which peak um, kind of peak intensities are caused um, by which function groups, etc., to just kind of emphasise it. Ah, so for this one, um, because this happened to be a ketone, um, if you've got the infrared spectra, let's just check, ah, yes, I have got a peak in the right intensity um, of um, this C1-1-D carbonyl group, okay? Um, please let me know if there's anything else you want me to go through. Um, I will do um, just a quick short video now as well on um, fragmentation with things like um, chlorine in OK or bromine, just to clarify that as well. Okay.